Mira Hawken with Shergun Falls head coach John Scott following a scrimmage with the Hawken Hawks coach. Kind of the big thing for Shergun Falls this year, you're going from the Shergun Division to the Valley Division of the Shergun Valley Conference. Some new teams, you played Berkshire last year in week one and you beat them. Uh, some unfamiliar opponents, Cardinal, Kirtland, um, Crestwood, some new teams. So what are you kind of looking forward to once that conference play starts? I know we're seven weeks away, but when you get there, how exciting is it to kind of see some new opponents? Well, I mean, it, it'll be different, no doubt. Um, but honestly, right now, our focus is on the most familiar opponent that we have at Sugar Falls. And when we made the move over to the Valley Division, and when we knew that was in the works, you know, I had a lot of conversations with Coach Rosati about we got to keep the rivalry, you know, going. You know, the fact that uh, we're in different divisions, we can't go a year without Chagrin playing West Jeep. So there were a lot of, uh, you know, finagling with uh, schedules and whatnot to get it to happen. And we got it week one. So really, I mean, those other teams that we play, you know, it's fine down the line, but our, our focus is on West Chicago week one. I and mean, that's a game that everyone circles every year. And this year it's week one, so that's our focus. How much, how much do you guys have to kind of do from this Friday and next Friday, as far as growing and getting better, before you start after school practices and you work towards playing your rival at yeah. the Battle of 306 well, on I Friday mean, night? With a typical first scrimmage, I mean, you're going to be as vanilla as possible. What you want to see with a 10 and 10 play is who can block, who can tackle, who are going to be the guys that can execute. There's zero game planning that goes into the opponents that you play. Everything is scripted uh, based on what you want to see from each kid. Sometimes you put them in, in a situation to fail, in a sense, and you don't check out of it because of the fact you want to see what they can do. So uh, we'll get to the film, we'll learn, you know, we'll add a little bit more in uh, in the next scrimmage, and then obviously by the time we get ready for game week, then you know, there's, there's no cards that uh, are going to be not turned over, if, if you will. So we'll be ready for that. Mentioned the play style of the seven of, of the scrimmage, ten plays, ten plays. What have you learned most? Obviously, and it's such a small sample size, but what did you learn most about this team that shows some promise moving forward? Well, I mean, we're going to be a more balanced team. Um, you know, last year having a sophomore quarterback. Uh, you, you don't want to put a lot of power onto him. Uh, you want to kind of take the ball out of his hands this year. He's ready to take it and run with it. So we will throw the ball more. Uh, we have a lot of playmakers on the perimeter. Uh, we you know, get a couple kids uh, coming back into the district or a couple kids back into our program that didn't play last year. It is a big deal. And we think they were pretty solid on the perimeter. So, you know, today it was kind of handed off, read that type of stuff. But, you know, I think our, our offense is going to be far more complex. I mean, we're going to get the ball. You know, Jacob Hands, he's going to be able to run it, throw it, you know, as well as, you know, hand it off to a bunch of different guys. So uh, I would say for sure we're more balanced than, than we've ever been, and, you know, you'll see us throw the ball up more. And I just want to ask about week one. It's not very often you get to play uh, once conference rival yeah. in week one. So how much fun is that to start off the game with, really start off the season with maybe, in a way, your most important game of the year? You, usually that doesn't come until weeks five yeah. through ten, but no, you started off week one with it. You know, to, to stand on this turf, look over, see kids, you know, from West Yaga and they're wearing beach chagrin shirts. I mean, that is awesome. I mean, that's 100% what the rivalry is about. You know, you're going to see our kids in beat West shirts. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I think both coaches, you know, Coach Rosati and I, have, we go back to 1999 and, you know, and, and, and being a part. I know Coach Rosati went to Perry, but he came back. But, I mean, he knows what the rivalry of Sugar and West G was and, you know, some of the games that we had, you know, the overtime thrillers, uh, you know, when we were on our run, you know, uh, seven point game, you know, type things are always, you know, comes down to, to the wire. So, uh, to, it really, the best part about, I think, having the rivalry one is that when you get that 90 degree day and it's hot, you know, it's basically, hey, it's West G, right? You know, as opposed to some school that they've never heard of that's maybe 50 miles away that you're playing week one. No, I mean, it's like, hey, you know, suck it up. West G's doing it, right? West G's doing the same darn thing, so you better get one day better. And it, it's kind of like the, the coaching tool. It's so easy to get your kids motivated because of the importance of the rivalry. All right, thank you so much. Yeah.